So, so you, mentioned you mentioned this in neuro developmental ability, ability which impairs. At what stage does, does this neuro developmental disorder occur in the child? You know, developing, you know, developing starts, starts in the womb. In the womb. And when I, I said neuro developmental, it has to. Uh, I mean that. It is mainly localized between the brain and the spinal cord. And, and the, the, the development of the of brain and spinal cord, cord takes place in womb, womb as, as early as, as the, the, the third week. The third week. The third week. So as, as, we, as we shall see, see later, later. When, 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 when analyzing some of, some the, positive of the positive factors, factors you will, you see, will that see that there are that some, there are factors, some that factors that make it make possible, possible or predispose, or predispose um, some, some um, fetuses, fetuses to the development, the development of this, of this or rather, or rather unfortunate, unfortunate abnormality. abnormality. Okay, okay. So, so let's, let's talk about the risk of factors. factors. What, what are the leading uh, risk of uh, factors, factors that predisposes one predispose to, to autism? autism. Um, I would, I, would, I would like, I would like to, to mix up mix this, this with, the, with causes the causes of autism. Of autism. Okay. It's okay. better it's to better mix, to mix them, them up. Then when then we look at the causes, causes then we'll, we'll try and draw and, draw and extrapolate and marry them with, uh, um, and, 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 and try and key in the risk factors. Basically, there are three main general factors that one that we can consider. The first is environmental factor. The second... Uh, 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 there's the there biologic, is the biologic factor, factor, and the third, and the third is, is gene gene no, no, genetics. genetics. These are the These three, are the three main, factors. main factors. Having, Having said, said that, that, it is it therefore, is therefore important, important for pregnant, for pregnant women, women to ensure, ensure that, that they attend antenatal anti clinics, clinics early, early frequently, frequently, and, and take, take their prescribed, their prescribed medication. medication. If they, if they attend, attend in, in, in developed, developed countries, countries and, and I pray, I pray we, are we are going to get, to get there soon, soon in this country, in this country. When, you when you attend your antenatal clinic, clinic it, is it is possible to identify, to identify or to have a diagnosis, diagnosis of some of these ailments as early as three as months, months in utero, that is, in that is in while the while baby is in the womb. Three to five months in developed countries. In fact, some surgical procedures have been carried out on kids that are in utero about about six months. So early antenatal clinic visits, taking the required drugs, limiting exposure to toxic substances by pregnant mothers, and also, and also trying to trying prevent to yourself, yourself from, from um, um, doing anything, anything that, would that would injure the child, the child in utero. In utero. Very, very, very important. Very important. Okay, so you mentioned uh, some of the risk factors. Then you 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 you, you, you also highlight. You, um, um, uh, had earlier mentioned that you were combining it with the causes, the leading causes. Uh, speak to us uh, briefly about uh, some of the causes. Very good. Let us. Take, let me take the first component, which is environmental factors. As I said earlier, yes. uh, and, and, and this is in line with the biopsychological you know, concept of health and illness. Um, exposure of mothers to toxic substances, uh, especially pesticides, can trigger up a reaction in utero that may um, um, cause autism. Um, looking at the bi biological biological factors, our nervous system is made up of millions of cells known as neurons, and be beneath these neurons is a structure which is known as terminal button. Inside these terminal buttons are chemicals that we call neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are the substances that are responsible for our behavior. So, take a substance, take a neurotransmitter like serotonin, that is a that is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. If it is produced in excess as a result of some congenital anomaly, it is possible that, that such, such kids may be predisposed to having autism. Um, another neurotransmitter that may also predispose us to it is 
um, acetyl, um, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine um, may be hypersensitive as a result of some chemical changes in the nervous system occasioned by some um, medications or toxic substances. They become hypotoxic and um, hypersensitive and may equally predispose, uh, may, may be a predisposing factor. Then there is another um, biochemical or neurotransmitter known as glutamine. Glutamine is, a, is an excitatory neurotransmitter, highly, highly effective, highly excitatory. So if anything can lead to its surge, surge or deficiency, it may also be another predisposing factor. Uh, mind you, as I said earlier, pregnancy per se does not cause autism. But there are certain factors in pregnancy that may predispose um, kids or babies from developing autism, as I've said earlier. And some of them are exposure to some toxic chemicals during pregnancy, um, like of, uh, like of um, the capacity to attend antenatal visits are scheduled, diminished or impoverished nutrition Nutritional status of mothers, which is which is very common in rural areas, and um, lack of essential vitamins. So these are these are some of the factors that I believe can effectively contribute or predispose this these children to autism. Okay, let me let's go back to the day itself as designated by the United Nations. That's the World Autism Awareness Day. And the, the theme for the day this year is uh, moving from surviving to thriving. Autistic individuals share regional perspectives. Originally, and maybe if you want to, across the world, and if you want to bring it to Africa and in Nigeria, what is the prevalence uh, rate of autism? In, in Nigeria, presently, though the statistics is deficient, we have more than 100,000 cases in Nigeria. But I believe that we have up, up, um, um, more than 200, because with my little experiences in the village, in various villages, since I've gotten myself involved in rural medical practice, I have come across has four or five cases that I'm, that I'm presently managing at the family level. And there is so much ignorance, so much ignorance, um, you know, surrounding this unfortunate condition that, that, that our kids are forced to have. There are, in developed countries, if you like, that, like the United States, there is high level of awareness resulting in the establishment of centers resulting in the establishment of self-help self groups, resulting in the establishment of formation of various NGOs that move from um, uh, country to country, health, health centers to, to health centers, educating mothers, especially pregnant mothers, you know, on, on, on the need for them to be aware that autism exists. And when it does exist, these societies have in place systems that help parents to cope, help parents and the kids to cope with this condition. Uh, what I have failed to do is to give you the classification, which I will give you later, as enunciated by DSM-5. There are basically three levels of um, um, autism. Level one is the mild, uh, is the mild form that requires uh, least assistance for the child to function effectively. Level two requires moderate assistance for the child to function 
and level three uh, requires severe or marked assistance for the child to survive. Mind you, most of these kids have very uh, interesting characteristics. They are not interested in the environment. Some of them have bowel problems like constipation. They, well, most of them don't talk, don't talk easily. And some of them, even at the formative space, uh, stage, you will discover that a child of one year cannot even speak. One year. So it is left to the, well, to the system, to, to the system to support the family to bring up these kids with necessary aids. But it will interest you to know that some of these kids that do not speak initially can just have a jump start of speech, jump start in quotes, between the ages of five, six, and seven. They can start speaking. And the kids, these kids are expected to be trained as normal children. They're supposed to go to school, so society must provide the necessary infrastructure for these kids you not know, to be educated. And one point, one point that I must stress is autism may or may not affect a child's IQ. A child that is uh, autistic may have problems initially in school. But as I said earlier, most of them focus on some particular objects like toys, TVs, radios, etc., etc. So it is now left to the society to craft a strategy of ensuring that we bring out the best from these kids based on their area of interest. They can live normal lives. Also know that we have autistic individuals in our society that are working in developed countries who have autistic individuals in the military and there is special provision for them. So basically what we need in Africa and Nigeria in particular and my beloved state Benue is to ensure that massive awareness is created. When that is done, we are blessed in this state of having about three tertiary um, um, health, health facilities. We have Ben West University teaching, ho teaching hospitals with competent um, consultant pediatricians, with competent psychiatrists and psychologists. We have Federal Medical Center blessed with competent pediatricians, competent psychiatrists, and competent um, psychologist. Then there, there, is a, there is one facility which I regard as a tertiary institution in Makadi. That is Nigerian Air Force um, um, Hospital. That hospital is equally well equipped. In fact, some of the equipment or analysis structure and processes in that hospital are now found in some of, or some of these other hospitals. So, we can harness this um, uh, bulk of human resource. They can dedicate one day, just as a day is dedicated for ophthalmolo uh, op uh, ophthalmology, a day is dedicated for cancer screening. We can also craft the strategy of dedicating a day per quarter or a month, de depending on the models on ground, for people to come or for health personnel to go out on awareness campaign, outreach programs, so that people can become more aware. And I am looking forward to having, let's have more NGOs. Let's have more health, uh, health personnel, you know, for me NGOs that will go to the nitty, through the heart of our rural areas, because there is so, so much myth surrounding autism in the villages. Some parents have thrown away these kids that they are, um, um, spirits or ghosts. In fact, I had to counsel one. In fact, they, they refer to one as a snake. I said, no, this, this, this child is not a snake. A, a snake. This child has 
uh, cell deformity that can be uh, addressed if you assess the appropriate healthcare facility. So awareness is key. Then after awareness, let us set in motion a strategy of trying to get these gates on time and having centers that would, that would um, effectively, effectively take care of them. Not only center our schools, we need special schools for autistic um, children. We need, we need special schools for them. Because uh, I, um, attending conventional schools may, may, may be a problem. So let's try and have special schools for autistic children as the population increases. Okay, particularly the issue of myths surrounding autism, especially in the villages, which you mentioned, yeah. has been a very serious concern. Can you speak to us further on what the people uh, really need to understand about autism uh, so that the signs to watch out for, uh, so that one doesn't necessarily get to be entangled with the myths that, oh, uh, somebody uh, is, is a snake or mm -hmm. joving, like the two people we say, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the way you try to put yes. it. Basically, autistic children find it difficult, difficult to speak. Even at the age of one, some of them don't speak. So it is important for us to create that awareness. Let's go to the villages and give them some of this um, warning, warning signs. Um, communication is a problem. And they find it difficult to look into the eyes of parents. At the age of 10 months or even 14 months, you call a child by his name, the child will not answer. The child will not recognize that he's been called. 14 months. At times, 14 months. You call them and they do not um, respond. So um, parents in the village start getting worried that how can my child not communicate at the age of 12? How can my child not not be a position to sit down, crawl at, at six months, seven months? How can my child have defective ball movements? Some of them are highly constipated, and when it is time to have uh, ball movement, their, that hygiene is not there. Even as old as uh, 12, 12 months. And... Um, they are fixated on certain objects. In the villages where they don't have toys, you can see a child being fixated on a hole. Because he may see a hole in the mother's room and be fixated. He will hold, he will pick the hole and start playing with it, or broom. Because there are no toys to play with. So he will be playing and he will not bother. He will not bother. You know, it will interest you to know that these kids also laugh. But they laugh unusually. Things, um, funny things may happen. They may laugh, but it may, um, the surprising aspect of it, which I which I witnessed, was somebody died. Family was crying, and the child was laughing. As an autistic child. Yes. Okay. Well, was laughing. And that was basically aimed at times to ease off the tension in the system. So these are the warning signs to look out for. Delayed communication, not being, in, not being interested in the surrounding, in other words, non-interactive, um, failure to look at you and I, inability um, to manage his or her balls you know, effectively be, and being fixated, being fixated on some objects. Okay, let's uh, go back to uh, the basis of it once again, which is, is it children that are only prone to coming down with autism? I'm, I'm, I made this clear that there are some autistic people in government there are some autistic people in, in the military, in the U.S. When I, when I, when I was in the U.S. And I, and I toyed with the idea of um, settling down, uh, I attended 
a camp, uh, U.S. LME camp, and this issue was discussed. And I, I made, uh, uh, in our environment, you will discover that there are some adults walking that even in their places of work, they are withdrawn. They do not interact with anybody. They easily get annoyed with colleagues. They go to work. If, if they do what they're supposed to do, the box stops there. No social interaction, and their communication is very hostile, very hostile. It's, it's not only kids. Some kids have outgrown. Some kids have outgrown autism. Mind you, there is no cure for autism. It is you know, symptom, um, symptomatic management. There is no cure for autism. We just manage the signs and symptoms that we believe are incapacitating uh, incapacitate the individual or child either in school or place of work. There are adults that are autistic. And if there is no cure for it, like you mentioned, mm. the, 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 for instance, the delayed speech, how no, can it be? Research, research is ongoing. In fact, there, in fact, there are speech uh, uh, theaters in most schools now. There are rooms, there are departments or sections that have been created just for autistic children in developed countries, just to manage, manage that speech deficiency. And I hope with time, I'm looking forward to when um, Dr. Swende, who is doing a good job, I mean Dr. Kwande, who is doing a good job in the teacher hospital now, we team up, we have a cross-functional team of uh, pediatricians, um, psychiatrists, and psychologists, sort of a structure, and then partner with the linguistic department, languages, and have a speech theater for, for autistic uh, individuals. They are trained. It's possible to train them. And they are being trained abroad. In this country, we don't yet have the facilities. Maybe one in Lagos. I heard, I heard that an NGO has just established a speech center in Lut. I'm not too sure. So I can't quote that. But I heard, I, I was speaking to a colleague of mine, Dr. Uh, Professor Lidi Taria, and he said that an NGO uh, established a speech um, laboratory, laboratory in Lagos. So let's hope that more of these speech uh, laboratories will spread. Okay, dear listener, in case you are just tuning in, you are listening to Perspectives on I Get Radio 95.5 Star FM, Makudi. We are discussing World Autism Awareness Day. And we have leading us in the discussion here in the studio, uh, the medical doctor, head psychologist, and management scholar, Dr. Joe Asan, is sharing insights with us on what autism it is and the signs to look out for the red flags and even uh, other issues of management, uh, which we'll dive into as we go along. And you too can be a part of the program by sending us a message to ask a question or seek clarification on areas you may want to. The number for text message and WhatsApp is already available for such engagements. The number is 0912699404. 0912699404. That line is available for text messages and WhatsApp chats. Please remember to include your name and the location you are sending your message from. And at 10 o'clock, the line for calls will be available for you to phone in and ask questions or make contributions on the program. The number is 0814335292. 0814335292. That line will be available at 10 o'clock. Let's remind you, dear listener, once again that the program is streaming live on all our social media platforms including Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Kindly search I Get Radio and TV on these platforms and follow the live stream conversation. You may as well drop your questions or comments on that live stream link. Uh, if they are related, we will share. We will definitely take it. Share the link with your friends as well to uh, get them engaged on the program. Okay, Dr. Asa, yeah. you were itching to say something. Yes, that. No, yeah, there are two, two or I think three winning signs which, are, which, which we didn't capture, okay. which I think we should... Um, bring um, bring on board. Okay, please. Um, I, I don't know if it's because of this 
of their condition, uh, autistic children tend to be violent, very upset. At even um, the test of some uh, of some products and even smell, they tend they tend to be very violent when they are exposed to some smells and tests. And because of the not being interested in the in their environment, they tend to have these repetitive movements, either of their hands or feet. Some of them will keep continuously flag their hands or feet repetitively. You know, um, which I feel is a compensatory uh, compensatory mechanism to take care of what they are um, losing in the normal environment because of lack of interface or interaction. And, uh, <clears throat> so basically, when kids start becoming very violent, that, is, that should give us a cause for concern. And that is where the management by a psychiatrist comes into play. As I said earlier, management of autistic kids does is not the purview of one or linear channel in the healthcare sector. Minimally, we need a minimum of three professionals, as I, as some, as, as I said earlier. A specialist in, in, in pediatrics, specialist in, specialist in psychiatry, and a specialist in health, health psychology or health psychology as the case may be. We are blessed with these people in our state. So nothing stops us from, you know, jump, jump starting this uh, program. Let's establish um, a center, if not in Federal Medical Center, Makodi. Let's have it in the teaching hospital. Let, let it be said that Benue State is one of the first states in the country to have a center that is meant to take uh, to handle autism. Because as, I, as I've told you, we have to, uh, it, is my, it is my considered opinion that we have more than 200 cases. Though researchers may give you 100,000 cases in Nigeria, I believe there are more because of our inability to capture rural cases that are being um, discarded in the bush or killed daily. Okay, let's talk about the early, early warning signs once again. It should one uh, wait to uh, have these warning signs uh, detected in the hospital, or what are the signs that parents, when they suspect, they should seek medical attention? All parents have an idea of the developmental milestone of their children. The moment you start going to, uh, our wife start going to, our mother start going to uh, the hospital for an instant clinic, even at the primary health care level, they are given developmental milestones. When we expect the child to, to sit, when we expect the child to crawl, when we expect the child to, to stand up, when we expect the child to stop laughing, when we uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. if you are if you have a child that is <coughs> sorry sorry yeah. sorry sorry please <coughs> sorry yes when we have a child that is not interested in his or in or environment and is having difficulties communicating between 10 to 10, 10, 10 months. You don't need to be told that something is wrong. You don't need to be told. You have to make concerted efforts. Sorry, please. You have to make concerted efforts to see a healthcare personnel. Also, if you see your child having repetitive movements, like flagging of the hands or unusual movements. You don't, you don't need a healthcare um, um, a personnel to, to tell you. The first thing to do is to quickly um, visit the nearest healthcare center. Um, 
hyperactiveness, I have just I mentioned, impulsiveness, um, I mentioned. There is a common illness that children experience, not common per se, epilepsy. No, well, I'm sure you, you've heard of ep epilepsy in children. Yes. Good. Epilepsy or seizures. When a child that is less than a year starts experiencing seizures, you know, concurrently with inability to speak, there's a problem. There's a problem. So these are the warning signs that we can pick at home. Inability to move. Some of them find it difficult to move. Movement skills are diminished. We can pick them up without going to the hospital. So once you pick up this simple warning signs, head to the nearest healthcare facility. Okay. Dear listener, in about uh, some minutes away, we shall open the telephone line for you to uh, phone in and make, uh, ask questions or make contributions to the program. But Dr. Hassan, mm -hmm. epilepsy and some of these that you, you pointed out, are they risk factors that, that people should watch out for, particularly epilepsy, because it is common in rural areas? Um, I, 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 uh, I, have done, I have not done a comparative study of the incidence of epilepsy in rural areas and cities. But I believe that, um, you remember initially I made mention of um, antenatal clinics, uh, I mean prenatal visits, and safe deliveries. As a young uh, medical officer in, in, in 85, uh, we, we were exposed to conducting forcep deliveries. Whenever there was um, obstruction, there was mild, they would use forceps, you know, on the baby's head and extract the baby. I think I think I think that has stopped now. I don't I don't think gynecologists are still I mean are still using using that because the cases of of seizures have been linked with forceps delivery in developed worlds. In fact, they have stopped. In some cases, they have stopped for, uh, no, um, uh, for, uh, forceps assisted deliveries. They've stopped. To say that epilepsy is a forerunner to autism, I won't, I, won't, I won't take that. But to say that epilepsy can contribute, may contribute to autism, there, may, there might be an element of truth in that as a contributory factor, but not as a main causative factor. Epilepsy cannot be a main causative factor of autism, but it can be a contributory factor. Okay. And if it is a contributory factor, does it uh, occur? Also, is it detected also at the point of uh, being a child or even in an adult, it may occur? No, if, you know, this, may, this may interest you. There are lots of people that are epileptic uh, that, that, are on, that are on medication. Some of them may have um, um, futures signs or futures of autism that have, have not been detected. That may be level one, as I said el, um, earlier on. But there are some autistic um, um, persons out there that have as a you know, uh, concurrent uh, pathology of, of epilepsy or, or seizures. They have, they have constant seizures. I, I met a case like that in Vandika a couple of um, years ago. Um, unfortunately, that young that young guy is with the Lord now. Um, he had he was not supported by the family. He was complete completely withdrawn. He was having frequent seizures. So I took I, I took time to visit the family. Um, initially, they were reluctant to talk to me. Based on based on 
um, their belief. But when I convinced them, they opened up and said since they gave birth to this boy, he has been problems all over. He spoke late, poor performance in school, he didn't want to go to school, he didn't want to work. So the family just neglected him. So I, I counseled them. I said, look, this condition can be handled. If you have time, I think at that time, the former ES of, um, of um, Benoist Health Management Board was running his clinic in, in Vanica, that is um, Dr. Tule. I tried to take him to his center for an analysis, but the parents refused. I left him, I, I, I told them that each time they were, they were ready to go, I gave them Dr. Tule's number. They didn't, the next thing I had was the guy, the guy had gone. May he still rest in peace. Okay, and that uh, speaks to the general attitude of parents with such conditions. In fact, in, in, in researching about this program and also looking out to get people with such experiences to speak to us, uh, I was told of certain cases of parents with uh, children with such conditions, but none was willing to speak to us. Can you sensitize the public, especially parents, on the essence of speaking out, devoid of the stigma, and how the society should do away with the stigma attached to people who are autistic? The world has gone past the level of stigma. I've made it quite clear in my opening um, remark. In Britain, autistic children go to school normally. They are assisted. All they need is assistance depending on the uh, uh, level of severity. They just need assistance from the home front and society to function. The problem is uh, uh, impairment of various functions. Society can help. Parents can help. Autism is not a death sentence. Children with autism can be transformed to live a normal life. They have been known to get married. They have been known to have kids in developed, you know, in developed societies. So why can't we have that here? The first thing to do, as I've said, is massive sensitization, even if it means going house to house. Each clinic, each antenatal clinic, Federal Medical Center, Benwester State University Teaching Hospital, all the general hospitals, Air Force Base, let there be a day, just pick up a day and talk to uh, would-be mothers on the reality of this so that if any of them is unfortunate, we're not, going, we're not saying that they're going to have it, but let them know, let them be aware. If you're aware, you will take proactive um, steps to correct some of these anomalies and decrease the severe nature of autism. And your being aware is a function is of your accepting that autism is just like any other impediment um, that can be taken care of. These kids grow up, can grow up to be normal human beings. I said that we have, we have autistic people in the military in the U.S. We have autistic people walking in various um, fields of endeavor. So let's, let's, let's keep on drumming this message. If possible, I believe in using faith-based organizations. I'm a believer. When, when I was first with a problem of severe substance abuse in Bew, my, my, my last resolve was hate-based organizations, Catholic Church and other churches and mosques. We can use the Catholic Church. The priest can have a thought. We can give the priest a thought as trainer of trainers. Let them have a broad knowledge of this concept and sensitize uh, various parishioners on the need to accept these children 
and to seek help. Let us also galvanize our traditional institutions. It will shock you to know that we have various structures in villages that we can use to disseminate this information. At there are various village meetings. We can get people to go and talk to them so that they will stop throwing away these kids as being ghosts, job as they say. These are these are normal human beings that just need help. They just need assistance to grow up and live normal lives. I made it quite clear that autism is not cured, but treatment is symptomatic. Yes, we'll talk about the management of that uh, as we go along. It's about time for us to engage with those listening to us, dear listener. In case you, you are just tuning in, you are listening to Perspectives on I Get to Radio 95.5 Star FM, Makudi. This morning we are focusing on World Autism Awareness Day. We are giving a sensitization on what autism is about, its causes, how it can be managed, and also how the society can remove the stigma attached to it, or what we need to know about it in totality. Leading us on the subject is a medical doctor, a health psychologist, and management scholar, Dr. Joseph. Dr. Joe Hassan is here in the studio uh, with us, and you too can contribute on the program on 080 433 5992. 081-433-59292. That line is available for telephone calls for you to ask questions or make contributions. Uh, share an experience with us if you have one on how your situation can be managed. Also, you can send us a text message on 0912699404. The line for text messages is 0912699404. That line is already activated for messages. Remember <coughs> to include your name and the location you are sending a message from. Let's start taking these engagements now. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Oh, we lost connection with you. The line is still open uh, for such calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, okay, Dr. Hassan, uh, before we engage with more people, let's talk about the management of autism. How can it be managed when it is uh, detected? Or uh, is there any kind of diagnosis for it in any way before the management? Let's talk about its diagnosis, first of all. Yeah, it's if it is it, uh, yes, diagnosed. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot, we cannot have an effective diagnosis of autism through the use of blood, uh, blood assay as we do in other, condi uh, other conditions. Um, um, the diagnosis of autism can be arrived at by thorough, thorough physical examination, examination and history by a team of uh, pedi uh, pediatricians, uh, psychiatrists, and psychologists. And where it is not possible to find this combination, I believe that um, the diagnosis can be made by any one of these three if the basic signs and symptoms are taken into account. First sign and symptoms, difficulty in communication, um, in communication and not being interested in the environment. If you find a child that cannot um, ha make any attempt at um, communicating at one year plus, then that is a cause for concern. If you uh, have a child that is not interested in its environment, when you call, call such a child by his or her name, there is no response. The child refuses to look at you, but instead looks sideways, gets, get, gets fixated on certain physical objects other than you, then certainly something is wrong. And we should, we should be uh, pointing our, com our compass towards um, autism. But to, but to say that we are going to the lab, to um, get a blood sample of a child, to have a detailed analysis, um, where I think it's 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 an, on, an ongoing research, which we which um, uh, medical science, you know, I'm not going there yet, but there's some that we should get there, and the history of uh, of, of of mothers 
the prenatal history of mothers is very important, very, very important, and maybe occupation. You know that most of our rural uh, dwellers are farmers, and um, the use of uh, pesticides is high up there in villages because of our mainstay, which is farming, isn't it? So people use pesticides a lot. And the, there is a chemical in pesticides that has been implicated, has been implicated with, with autism. Some of these chemicals are banned in developed countries, but unfortunately shipped to Africa because of ignorance, poverty, and maybe because of uh, connivance with uh, some of our uh, regulatory bodies. We have no reason to accept any pesticide or any chemical that has been banned in China, U.S., Britain, Germany, into Africa, into Nigeria, into Makodi, and all and surrounding villages. They know why those, those chemicals were banned. Okay. We'll talk about the uh, management with, uh, with which you just started. Hello, good morning. Hello. Okay, it does appear there's a challenge with the network. Uh, in any case, people are calling the SMS line. The line for <coughs> calls is 0814335992. Let me repeat the line once again. 0814335992. That is the line available for calls. The one for text messages is 0912699404. 0912699404. So please don't mix it up. The one for SMS is different and the one for calls is also different. So if you are calling the SMS line, it may be a, a bit confusing for us. The one dedicated for SMS is uh, available as well. Uh, both are uh, there. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take some messages we have coming in, uh, which are uh, mostly questions uh, for the calls. We'll try to uh, figure out if there's an issue with the network that we need to work on. This one says, good morning, everyone. My name is Ganesan Kunle from High Level Makudi. I write movie scripts, and I'm always talking to myself, especially when I am alone. I do imagine what to write in a scene in order to convince the audience. So in that process, I am always soliloquizing. And a lot of people who sometimes see me talking to myself thought there is something up with me. Is this also a sign of autism? Kunle is asking us this. Um, with, Kunle, with what Kunle has said, it is not possible to make a diagnosis of um, autism with that. Um, that may be associated with the pressure of uh, of his task. Maybe he is expected to craft a movie within a spe specific period, and as he said, he, you know he finds it difficult to write, and then he keeps on he starts to so soliloquize, yes. and then talk to himself. Um, that is not that is not typical of that is, that is not a typical aesthetic behavior. But if Kunle, well, if Kunle does not mind, maybe he can contact you. You will give give him my uh, number. He will meet me, meet me and we'll talk. But, okay. I, I, but I do not believe that he is suffering from autism. Okay. Hello, okay. good morning. <coughs> Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, please, the line is available. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> okay, Kunle, so um, I believe you listen to us. Uh, like uh, doctor said, if you don't mind, your number is on the SMS here. And uh, possibly I will text this line to you so you may reach in if you want to. Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I am fine, thank you, sir. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Hassan, how are you? Fine, happy Easter. Happy New Year. This is your friend John. Oh, John, how are you? Okay, John Aduku, thank you for joining us on the program. Where are you reaching us from, sir? Okay, thank, thank you very much. Please go ahead with your uh, contribution. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, this country, <coughs> we, are, we are too careless about uh, health care. 
even the the, the simple things that uh, we provide in our small small hospital health clean, health centers, meant we're not able to do it. What more? This gigantic project you brought there again. Do you think our government are thinking along that line? <laughs> if at all it happens, do we have the experts to manage that thing? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you very much, Aduku. I think let us look at um, health care and service de uh, delivery on a broader scale before we dive into that. I have I've had op op the opportunity of. Um, I, I, I beg your pardon. Before you expand on that, we have several calls waiting on the line. Okay, so let's okay. engage with them. We'll speak to that. Hello, uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning uh, to you. Uh, this is Yogo Moses from North Bank. Okay, Yogo Moses, thank you for joining us. North Bank in Makudi, right? Okay, Yogo, you only wanted us to hear your name. So sorry. Okay, uh, please, uh, Doctor, continue with your thoughts. You were about to uh, speak to <laughs> the concern raised by John but, Yes, he made two, cons uh, two concerns, whether it's possible for us to have this project, and secondly, if there are uh, experts. Uh, uh, no, no, we have experts. I, I made it quite clear that three experts, three broad category of experts are needed, plus a fourth, which I will come into, which I will, uh, which I will deal with. We need consultant pediatricians, there are many of them willing to even if, if, um, willing to uh, donate their time for this project. I know if you meet um, Professor Mata Doko, she will willingly accept. We have competent psychiatrists. If you the CMAC of teaching hospital is a psychiatrist, Doctor Aj, my classmate is a psychiatrist. If you meet these two persons, they will assist to contribute. Even it's free. Then we need psychologists. There are lots of psychologists I've trained. I'm also a psychologist. I, I, I will put in time. But the problem of our healthcare delivery in Nigeria is that of funding. In 2015, um, heads of states, African Union, prescribed budgetary provision of not less than 15% for healthcare. 15%. This year, at the federal level, Less than 5% of the total budget was allocated to health care. That is abysmal. Then in Benue, I do not have the correct estimate, but I think it's below 10% of the total budgetary um, uh, projection. So the first thing for us to do is to look, because look, there are two areas that you do not toy with in any society that form a tribe, ignorance, poverty, and disease. Ignorance that starts education. Poverty. In, in, in Benue and most part of Nigeria, our area of core competence is agriculture. So we must invest heavily in agriculture, massive land clearing, improved seeds, and what have you. Then disease, health. We must provide enough funds for the healthcare system to one employ um, the required um, personnel, I was pleasantly shocked with the actions of the new CMD, uh, Dr. Honde, when an assumption of duty did massive recruitment in the teaching hospital. I pray that he'll be given the resources to continue with, with those good works. The next thing to do is for uh, this healthcare personnel to go on continuous training. Training is key in the healthcare sector. Okay. You is key. Training, training, training. Uh, in line with the doctrine of CQI. Okay. All right. We are so sorry. We have uh, several calls waiting on the line. So let's engage with them for that. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to the program. How are you? I am fine. Thank you for joining us on the program. Okay. My name is uh, Professor Moses Obadi, Commissioner for Agriculture Food Security, Benway State. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner, for joining us on Facebook. Morning, Prof. Thank you very much. My friend, Dr. Hassan, is doing a very good job on the work there. And uh, he has also acknowledged that agriculture is the way to go. I congratulate him. Okay, uh, back, back to health. 
Yes, health now. Yes. I want to make a little remark on autism. Autism, yes, autism. Go autism, ahead. many cases, is a genetic problem. And what we have discovered in genetics is that parents that are old are more prone to giving birth to children with autism. Parents that are old, especially mm -hmm. uh, old women. So my advice now to brainwave people is that uh, if you want to give birth to children, do it when you are young, at the reproductive age from 25. When you are more than uh, 40, do not stop. If not, you are likely going to give birth. You have a high probability of giving birth to autistic child. This has been confirmed over and over. Okay. okay this Secondly, is, yes. the issue of autism, the best way to do it is management. But in most cases, people abandon the child. If, uh, if you manage the child, well, the child will recover. But most times, the families are abandoned. They count their children, they will not count a child with autistic child. How many children do they have? They will leave that one inside the room. That should not be. This is my little contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Commissioner, for your contribution. From an agricultural mm -hmm. point of view, it will help. Thank, thank you, Prof. <laughs> thank you for that beautiful contrib um, contribution. Um, um, I had made it quite clear in the beginning that there are three main three main calls. I'm so sorry, Doctor Hassan. Let's engage with now that the network is uh, okay, allowing good. us okay, to okay, okay, okay. We'll allow you to also respond. To okay. That. Now that the network is being friendly, let's engage with several people that are waiting on the line. Uh, hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Nata. Good morning to you. My name is Judo Pebe. Judo Pebe. I'm calling from Baku. Okay. Please. Good to have you on the program, Judo Pebe. Thank you. I, I, I salute. The medical is part in the house. Thank you very much, Ruth. Good morning, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. The, the awareness you created this morning, I think it, it is enough. Because I, I, I was just keenly listening to, to you as you analyze the issue of autism. My advice is that, and to parents, you have to examine your child from bed carefully if you notice any abnormality in your child please go to the chief examiner the you the expert the medical expert for physical examination and possible uh, uh, medications and I want to advise Nigerian government they should please declare state of emergency in the health sector. Enough money is not pumped into the education, uh, to the, the health sector. Because we, the rural dwellers, we find it very difficult to access medical care. That is our challenge. This issue that you are talking about is so rampant in the rural areas. If the government can maybe upgrade primary health care centers and at affordable uh, medical IBs so that when somebody is being taken there, will be treated and cured. I think it will do us a good. Thank you and good morning. Good morning, Jude. Thank you very much for your contribution. We appreciate you. Uh, Jude is talking about uh, heads, uh, I mean, state of emergency in the health sector so as to strengthen. Okay, back to the concerns raised, especially, but I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Hassan, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Baji called in, he made a contribution. Yes. He alleged that people um, who are in their old age give birth to children that are more prone. I wanted to yes. ask you, but let's uh, engage for that. I'll come back to you shortly. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Yeah, this is Agatha also for Atachusa. Agatha also good to have you on the program. Atachusa in Makudi, right? Yes, in Makudi. Okay. And Agatha, also, your network seems to be breaking at your end. Okay. okay uh, well, read, you what, what, what about now? Yes, a bit better. Go ahead now. Okay, I want to greet the doctor in the house. Yes, it's um, good to you too. Morning, Paul. Yes. Uh, uh, to be sincere, they need to create more awareness over this issue. Because if you check in the villages, most of the mothers are suffering with this kind of uh, autism uh, children. Some will suffer with it. They will insult you. The neighborhood will insult you that you have given birth to a snake or you have bring, uh, give birth to a ghost. 
that uh, sometimes the mother rush in, in throwing the child away. And sometimes some that doesn't know, they go to all those uh, native doctors, they spend a lot of money, and at the end of the day, the child will die. So they need to create awareness over this issue. And two, now that farmers are using this uh, herbicide, they need to advise them how to use it to, for them to cover their nose. Because for research, this thing, the, the chemical has been causing a lot of this to uh, the children, to the unborn children maybe from the father to the mother to the mother to the child. So for people, farmers who are using these chemicals now, they should advise them seriously. You can see some of them are spraying those chemicals without blocking their nose. And the moment they get it in, this thing will form something into their body to move through uh, the, the mother to the child. So they should advise them how to handle those chemicals very well. Because for years, this thing has caused a lot of issues of giving birth to this kind of children. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul Agatha, also for your contribution. We appreciate you. Okay, Dr. Hassan, yes. back to uh, your concerns. Uh, yes. Let's begin with the one by Professor. Prof. But is it true that uh, the parents who uh, give birth to children in their old age are more prone to giving birth to children, autistic children? Yes, um, those facts have been, doc uh, have been documented. Uh, Prof is right. But then, uh, um, therefore, that factor falls under genetics. As I mentioned it earlier, okay. that um, genetics was one of the imp uh, uh, causes of uh, autism. Initially, it was thought that um, women were those that had uh, the genetic variant that uh, was responsible for autism. But modern research has proven that both um, uh, men and women you know, can have, can uh, provide the genetic variant that um, uh, produce, uh, predispose our kids to autism. As regards the issue of giving birth late, now, uh, Prof, you understand that one of our first ladies gave birth at the age of 50. Um, she's, she's alive, the husband is late now, a bachelor's wife. It is a documented fact that not only uh, autism, complications of pregnancy, all complications of pregnancy are more after age 40. It used to be 35, but because of improved standards of living and medication, 40. So if you are giving birth at the age of 40, you should expect, not always, but less than 60% cases, complications of pregnancy. That's for the woman, age 40. So, um... Uh, let me interrupt you very quickly. I'll come, we'll come back uh, and you'll conclude your thoughts on that. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am going to ask you to give me a Thank you for uh, joining us, Andrew Chigebra. Thank you, sir. My regards to the doctor in the house, the girl. In fact, he has spoken everything now of our man and the, the man of the whole world. God, God advised him. He is in more reason for that. Thank you. And like what you are saying, uh, early decision is even very good for for management. If a, ch a child is decided and the parent report the child to the doctor or to the medical doctor in time, I think uh, it can be useful to the society if well managed in future and they were brought up, we can manage them not to become uh, uh, this and then throw them away, just leave them in the house, go about all we want, we'll come back again and meet them in the house. So that is not the good. So early decision and reporting to the medical doctor is very, very key. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you for your contribution, early detection. Okay, Dr. Uh, mm. Hassan, uh, conclude your thoughts yes, on, on, on Prof. Yes, yes Prof. You, see, and uh, you were talking about complications. Of yes, uh, you know, we have yes. high uh, prevalence of infertility in the society today. Infertility is rampant. So, are you, and you cannot, pre you cannot prevent a woman who is 45 or even 50 from getting pregnant if she has the opportunity because she needs to have, you, you have to weigh the pros and cons of having a child at 50 against the pros of cons of having a child with bed defect. But the issue is, 
um, early antenatal clinic and constant antenatal clinic with some ch with, with, with some examinations may may take care of that. So let's do our best and leave the rest to God to assist for elderly couples. Because we must weigh the pros of cons of not having a child. So infertility, infertility is on the, on the rise. And women as old as 50 want to have Hello? kids. Okay. Hello, good morning. Um, Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. Yes, I'm Kwaza Vincent calling from Makodi, not Makodi, Fenway State. Okay, thank you, Kwaza Vincent. Yes. Yes, I greet the doctor in the studio. No, thank you. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Yes, this sensitization is coming at the right time because uh, most people in our villages, they don't know the cause of this, uh, this illness. So they are not aware. But now that you have given up the, 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 the symptoms by which our parents will look forward, if a child begins to manifest such uh, symptoms, they will know where to take these children to. It's at the right time. But need, uh, more needs to be done so that this sensitization should be taken to our various uh, IDP camps in our local dialect so that they will understand. Most of them are in the uh, IDP there. When a child begins to manifest these symptoms, they will be taking these children to traditional medicine people, which the, uh, most of the time complicates the, uh, the illness. So if they can take this sensitization to all these IDP camps or in our villages, through our churches and uh, all these our traditional rulers, it will go a long way in helping us about this type of illness, because most people don't know. So it's come. Uh, the sensitization is coming at the right time. Thank you. But need, more needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Kwasa Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prof, that aligns very well with what you had Precisely. said earlier yeah. about your civil society engagement and yeah. faith-based faith, faith, faith organizations. organizations mm -hmm. yes. Let me quickly uh, uh, comment uh, very, on very, very quickly, I'll come back to you. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, good morning. This is Emeka from, Emeka from North Bank. Good to have you on the program, Emeka Anyogo. Uh, my own is just a little thing I want to ask the doctor. It's a very good thing. Okay, uh, please ask me. But the, the thing that I want to ask, is it right for somebody who is having epilepsy? Maybe he fell on the ground at the time, maybe near the fireside. Is it right for us to go and carry the person instantly so that he will not burn the fire? So secondly, again, I, I think I, I'm saying that these things are... are Talking about this and making sure that publicity goes in by the national orientation agency should go to our rural areas because those are the places most of these things should be done. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, thank you very much, Emeka Nyogo, for your contribution. I will respond to your question right away. Thank you. Okay, Prof. Yeah, Jude Eber, Jude made beautiful points, and um, I'm happy he made mention of the de declaration of state of emergency on health. This should be a national declaration, not only Benway. It is um, annoying to see senior citizens or even middle-aged people assessing health care from out of pockets. Why am I saying that? The world over, universal access to health care is uncalled and on health insurance. In this, in this regard, uh, I'm calling on our executive governor, Reverend Hassan Talia, to revamp our Benway State Health Insurance Scheme that will provide the much needed financial assistance to our patients. There are, look, we have the structures in place. We have motorcycle um, higher association. We have, um, well, that's, that's Okada. We have um, yam farmers, we have rice farmers, we have potato. These are structures that can be utilized and keyed into our health insurance with minimal contribution. We'll be in the position to buy the required drugs, improve our primary, health, uh, primary and secondary health care centers, recruit or employ required personnel so that our people can enjoy uh, access to healthcare since the 15% declaration is not being met. And I'm hoping that by next year, by next year's budget, Benway State will do all that is humanly possible to jumpstart our, uh, our budgetary provision to health to 15. 
Health and agriculture. These are areas we will not play with. Health and agriculture. So Jude was 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 a right to have highlighted these points. Paul made mention of chemicals. I, I made mention of uh, uh, the use of chemicals and the need to control the chemicals that come in and minimize the use of chemicals, especially in pregnant women. Um, Guaza made mention of, of, of the need to increase our sensitization, take them to IDP camps, and bring in our traditional rulers. Our traditional rulers should be the agents of change. They should be the focal persons in this regard. Gabriel also made mention of early detection, which I had made earlier. And Mecca said, ask the question whether it is right or uh, appropriate for one to pick an epileptic patient that uh, is about to fall by the uh, fireside. There is nothing wrong. The, the most important thing is to ensure that his airway is protected, is the meat. This is also a traditional myth that you do not you do not pick up an epileptic patient. If you go to villages, you will see, somebody will fall down and they will run away. It's, they will run away. They will leave the patient there foaming. So if, if 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 an epileptic falls, rush down quickly, make sure that the airway is open and move him away from the fire so that he's not burnt by uh, the fire. Okay. So, Mr. Emeka Nyobo, I hope we have answered your question. We have some questions here. Uh, let's take some more before we continue with, with the calls that are hanging on the line. We have others in our text message. Well, this one says, good morning. Uh, this one says, hi. Okay. <laughs> These calls are coming in quite intermittently, so let me take some because we come back. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning to all, uh, all the guests in the house. Good morning. Yes, my, my name is Nyamte uh, uh, Nwa, from Nyambe Takalo government. Okay, thank you Nyamte Nwa for joining us. How is Nyambe in Taka so this morning? Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, I want to appreciate the, the doctor. He has spoken very well. And clarify all issues issue concerning the, 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 the medical condition there. And it, I believe we go a long way in helping to contain many cases of men away to join in the name of evil spirit or my other things. It has happened so much. Even within the place that I'm living here, I, I, I experience many of these issues. And I want to also uh, go ahead to uh, support this, uh, this uh, plan or suggestion that the... the, 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 the uh, uh, awareness to be created to religious uh, people and the traditional leaders. And uh, I also want to add up to that that I personally am a spiritual person. I try to solve this issue in one of my places here, a fair. And he has even, I, I, I even try to, I even uh, come to expressing a kind of uh, 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 hatred or hatred against me, that issue. So I want to suggest that if it is possible, let the government, in all the government hospitals, let the unit of counseling be provided there. And a register be made there. So that it, uh, when the doctors uh, detect this kind of issue, it should be registered there and uh, all the, the, the parents to continually attend to get the counseling so that the issue of train children will, will, be, will be minimized. Thank you so much. That is my own contribution. Thank Bye -bye. you, Tengwa. Thank you for your contribution. And thank you so much for the intervention you are doing in your community to sensitize people and uh, we hope that this program will strengthen you uh, to deepen the sensitization this one says let's take some message this one says hi i'm yamalu isaac from taka local government sir if a child is more than 12 years and he or she is not able to work and if is yours what would you do was one well, it was one in our area our area, he's not able to work and talk. Okay, there's one. I think that's what he means. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac Yamalu. Let's respond to this. Yes, very um, if a child is more than 12 years and he cannot work, the best thing to do is to bring him to a secondary or tertiary health care center. We have people that can assist. Um, we have um, physiotherapists. You know, after a clear diagnosis has been made, um, um, if, if, physiotherapists, if physiotherapists cannot help, then um, working aids can be, you know, provided for such a child to work. 
I have seen kids, I have seen working aids being given to kids of or, or about 14 or so. And mind you, autism may not be responsible for that. There's another condition that may, that may be responsible for that, polio. You've heard of polio? Okay, you yeah, are always. Yeah, it polio, polio, yeah, polio, yeah, polio, 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 polio is one of the... Uh, <laughs> I think it's one of the greatest, enemy, greatest enemies to these people. That is why vaccination is key. Um, you will find some of these kids, 12, 14, or even at the age of, from birth, they don't walk. It's not autism. Some of them are very intelligent. They go to school, they come first, but they can't walk because of paralysis occasioned by polio. So let's try and, let's try and, um, and differentiate this condition. Okay. If, right. So okay. Isaac... Please take note of that. We have answered your question, and I hope it helps. This one says, I am o Odeziga Andase Godwin from Makudi Benesde. My question is that that my brother's son is born. My brother's son is born, and the child is one year and four months, and the guy is not talking and also not walking. So in that case, what can be done about it? Very good. He's in Makodi. Yes. He's in Makodi. That's very good. Just just take 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 that lovely child to Federal Medical Center Makodi or teaching ho- uh, teaching hospital. Then he'll be he will be um directed to the appropriate department, you know, so that um a com- a, a comprehensive diagnosis can be made and positive actions taken to assist that child. Okay. I want to say I hope you have listened to us. Another one here says, Good morning, everyone. My name is Ganesin Kunle from High Level Makudi. Another question I want to ask is, there are a lot of cases of mental suicide in Nigeria, which cause for concern. In Oyo State, in Oyo State, I heard that someone committed mental suicide. Is mental suicide also caused by autism? <laughs> no, no, no. Suicide, um, su- suicide and suicidal um, self-harm. It's another topic that will take us four hours to digest. There are more than 30 causes or reasons for uh, persons wanting to commit suicide. In, don't go far, in university, yes, a young boy, a young boy, an 18-year, 19-year-old girl committed suicide before because her boyfriend um, um, dished her. She went 19, 19 years. Is that love suicide or what? In Lagos, a medical doctor parked his car two years ago. Medical doctor jumped into a lagoon and died. So suicide, suicide is a very wide topic, and the causes are the causes are many. I think that is a topic of discussion for another day. Maybe you, if you have time, we can come here and digest suicide. Absolutely, we'll be willing. Because it is an imaging issue that mm-hmm. is quite disturbing. Okay, Kunle, so take note. Another question, another message here says, Good morning, Nath and guests. Thank you for not disappointing me and the good people of Benue who were kindly waiting to hear you even today. What is the difference between autism and Down syndrome? Call Nath Todue from Todue Abraham from behind NMPC Mega Station Makudi Alidi Road. Okay, we'll come back to Connor's question before after this call. Hello, good morning. Hello. Oh, unfortunately, we lost our connection. Okay, Prof. Yeah, right. Down 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 syndrome is quite different from uh, autism. Um, if you if you see a Down, the features are clear: well, big head, um, slanting eyes, ears, um, zero to twenty percent um, intellect. Um, that is what most people call, most of our people call job. But if you see an an autistic child, the normal futures will be, the futures will be normal. The only problem will be repetitive, um, or, or unusual repetitive movements, and inability to either walk on time or speak. You know, but the physical abnormality that you see in the down, it's not there. Okay, so corner. I hope we have answered you and others who uh, are listening to uh, this program getting sensitized on the uh, issues as well. Hello, good morning. Hello. Okay, Prof, management of autism. You, earlier on, you pointed out the core professionals that are involved. 
in managing autism. You mentioned uh, a psychiatrist, a pediatrician, and a, 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 a head psychologist who speak about what they do in the process of managing these symptoms. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Br uh, briefly before good we come morning, back. Mr. Martin, yes. good, good, mor morning. good morning to you. Welcome to Perspectives. Thank you very much. This is Damian Zegeo Kwako from Naka in Gwewe Thank you, Damian Zegeo, for joining us. Hi, it's uh, Naka this morning. Yeah, cool. We're cool in Naka. All right. Please, good morning to the expert in the house, please. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, sir. I hope... I, I hope really appreciate I hope Naka is peaceful. Yes. No more problems. Yes, that no problem yet. We are very cool in Naka. Okay, Damian, please go ahead. I really, I really appreciate the way you're educating us on this uh, program, sir. Thank you. It's very a very much. wonderful one. In fact, the way you started uh, explaining this in the from the starting, I wanted to maybe come online, maybe be open when the lines are open. I will do some certain things with you, but the way you explain it. You went deep. In fact, I am well cleared. You see, we are experiencing some of these uh, such problems here in Naka. Like a family I know, a baby was born of such. And she was born. She she could work. She worked up to a month. Before a month, she could not work again. She falls down. And there is an Igbo man who burned a child in Naka here. Somebody I know very well. His child cannot work. It was a boy. So when they, the, 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 the boys bent, they took the boy to the hospital. Till now, in fact, the past week, the boy was able to walk. The bones now threatened. All this work, they have been calling them snakes. And uh, in, in fact, the job, like you earlier mentioned, the one that walked a month before he falls down again, the parents do not take care of him. So I am appealing to the government that if such things are being or are going to be take care of, they should come to Naka. You know, I am not hating. I it doesn't mean I hate my people, but it's very difficult for a girl person to do the right thing. Like I said, the baby that was born and woke up to a month, if the baby has been abandoned in Naka here, yeah. so if the government takes proper care of this thing you're explaining in the studio here, Mr. Uh, the doctor, it will be very very good. And when they come to the aid of our people in Gwewe. It will be very, very good. If not, we don't copy good things. Thank you very much for your contribution. Mm, Damien. Okay, thank you, Damien. Damien, you. Damien, you are a leader in your own uh, um, right. So you can um, assist so a society by going to this family, convincing, convincing the family to take this child that, that cannot walk to the hospital. You confirm that the other one could not walk, but when he was taken to the hospital, you know, he made it. So please, you are a change agent. So do us that favor by going to the family, and if there's a need, collect my number from uh, from uh, Nat. Then we'll see what we can do. Okay. It's okay. very it's very important. Okay, Damian. So mm -hmm. if you are listening to us, that is fine. And if you are willing to uh, partner with Doctor Hassan, the Doctor Hassan, on this situation and how he can help further, kindly send a text to zero nine one two six triple nine four zero four zero nine one two six triple nine four zero four. Just text your name Demian Zego Nakal you want to reach Nat and I'll yeah. pick your number and we'll get to link you up with Dr. Asa. Yeah, Nat. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm aware that you are very eager for me to be a, to become a professor. I'll be a professor very soon. <laughs> Maybe in, 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 in a year or so I'll be a professor. So don't, don't bother about that. For, okay. I'm not yet a professor. Then so, I'm going to be a professor very soon. So sorry. So, so, that, so, so that um, I'll come back I'll, to I'll, 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 I'll wear that gown and be drinking coffee with them. You know, you know, you know it's a cult. There's a professorial cult. Okay. So okay. <laughs> very soon I'll join them. Hey, hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the <laughs> program. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Natalia. I I called in for the second time to to plead with the management of Agel Radio. Uh, I know Natalia is one person that have been doing the society a very huge uh, job. Uh, please, I want to plead with the management of Agel Radio. Let them run this program, this particular topic in team language, so that many of the uh, or people living in the rural area will contribute. And then you hear massive cases concerning this. This is Agatha also, Agatha. I am pleading. 
Okay, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Agatha. Also, management uh, has noted. Thank mm -hmm. you. Management will look into your request. That's a very good. That's a very good suggestion. Thank you, thank you Agatha. Also, we appreciate it. Okay, that, Prof. That's a very good suggestion. And, uh, okay, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, we hope that experts like yourself and others may be willing if management decides to uh, run a series on it. No problem. Achieve as well. No problem. Uh, hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to Perspectives. Um, Doc, good morning, sir. Good, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. My name is Confidence. Come from my level. Confidence who? Yes. So, Kafo. Okay. Thank you, Confidence or Kafo. High level in Makudi, right? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Confidence. Uh, um, I, w I want to appeal that uh, this program should have a part two. And uh, above all, for doctor to make it clear this morning, I'm seeing people dying in pain. Maybe they have only one child, and the child has a problem. What were the solve? Hello, confidence. Hello, confidence. You are on, but we can't hear you. Confidence, are you there? Oh, so sorry, confidence. You are on, but it does appear there is a glitch with the network. Uh, uh, Doctor Hassan, let's talk about the management of autism, the mm. professionals involved, what are their roles, and uh, how it can be managed in the families or children uh, with such conditions? Um, it, I, th I think I had made it quite clear initially that there are about three professionals that uh, need to be consulted for effective diagnosis. Um, I mentioned um, a specialist, a, you know, a pediatrician, um, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, and of course, um, uh, medicine, medical practices, teamwork. Um, the, the most important group in this uh, in this sector, in this management scheme, have to do with nurses that um, may be required to go visit some of these patients in their homes. Um, I'm not going to bother you with some of the behavioral management therapy or cognitive um, therapy. I'll just um, mention some of the things that are important. The first thing that we should think about is early intervention, early diagnosis and early intervention. Um, based on what we have said, some of the warning signs have been highlighted. If we pick, if we pick these warning signs, we should visit the nearest tertiary health institution so that provision can be made for one, education and school-based therapies. If the, ch if the children are of school age, it will be possible, or it's possible for us to estab establish schools that these kids can fit in appropriately. I made mention of supportive or symptomatic medical therapy. Some of these kids are very agitated and aggressive. And, um, and this is the role of the psychiatrist where uh, anxiolytic drugs may be administered to calm down these kids. It is not in my, uh, it is not my, uh, my, my my take to give to give the names of drugs on t on radio or television, and I will not before people will go and start prescribing drugs for the uh, children with autism. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, there, um, there are two drugs that have that have been approved for the treatment of autism that will relieve the aggressiveness and repetitive movements of these children. Um, there is also nutritional therapy that have to be fed adequately. And maybe I think on this nutritional therapy, you should expand uh, a bit mm. better. No, you see, right. nutritional, uh, nutritional therapy basically revolves around eating balanced diets. You understand? Yes. Because most of the vitamins that are needed in the nervous system are deficient in this condition. So we cannot continue because you are... Well, from very younger, like me, then you start giving your child akbu, pocho, akbu, pocho, or then you give ice fish, akbu, akbu, akbu. That won't work. 
you know, at least look for some vegetables, look for some meat, oranges, you know. And so we have lots of plantain and bananas in the villages. We have lots of uh, thing, uh, uh, fruits that, that, that we don't use. This is the season for mangoes. Mango has tremendous nutritional value. Mangoes. So we mix this up and give, uh, I, I, I don't know, give these kids eggs and what have you. When I was talking, I made mention of us, uh, uh, part of the bi biologic or biological causes, the um, decrease or increase of some neurotransmitters. And I mentioned serotonin, I mentioned acetylcholine, and I also mentioned glutamate. If you visit a seasoned consultant in conjunction with a health psychologist, we will be in the position to find out if these um, flappy movements or spasms are occasioned by a diminished supply of these neurotransmitters. I told you that there were three causes. Yes. Environmental. Genetic and biological. Biological. So now I'm coming to the biological causes now. Yes. And the biological causes revolve around certain neurotransmitters. It is not, uh, I, I will try to make it simple, but your behavior and my behavior, our behaviors are regulated by activities of various neurotransmitters in our neurons. We have more than two million neurons in our system. Millions of them. And when you have deficiency of a particular neurotransmitter, certain illnesses come in. So in, in, in the case of autism, three have been implicated, acetylcholine, serotonin, and glutamate. So if um, an essay is, uh, uh, is carried out in conjunction with a physical examination, we'll be in a position to know which is deficient and the replacement done or reuptake mechanism enhanced to reduce the level. I said that some may be high, some may be low. Then for the group of autistic individuals that are working, even in Makati, some individuals are working in the school service. There are autistic uh, career persons. Then there is then the need of occupational therapy. Occupational therapy, either in the workplace or outside the workplace. Then for those of them that are suffering from chronic constipation, Chronic constipation may be a factor in some of them. Maybe you want to break down chronic constipation. Uh, constipation, the, the, the inability for us, for the child to defecate. You know, you, he, the child will eat, okay? Yes. Then, but, but for the child to defecate to be a problem. Defecation will be a, will be a problem. For two, three days. Just to pass two. Yes, to pass two. Easy, yeah. Yeah, no, no, let's, let's, let's just use simple defecation. <laughs> to pass two. Okay, to pass two. Yeah, in so, simple terms. Uh, yeah, so, so that to pass two. Uh, yeah, okay. Guess but, but, but don't use the layman in team language. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, to pass two, as you have said, yes. it, 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 it will be important to give them. Um, um, uh, relaxers or laxatants that may soften the stool or soften the bowels and make them because it's a problem and that may be associated with the cause. It may if it is if it's a chemical cause from the environment that is causing that constipation we don't know. If that cause is from um, the you know from the neurotransmitters we don't know. But our goal is to ensure that we relieve you know the child of the constipation and then. Most in civil societies, I have a very good friend. I have a very good friend in Texas. Very good friend. In fact, a schoolmate in Joss. Um, I'm not going to call his name. His child is autistic. So what he has done, he has stopped work. He has been working for the past 40 years, so he has enough money to live on. It's not, it's not like our system. He left this country after graduating from JAWS. 
University of Georgia in 1983. He's been there. So what he, he has divided his time 100% for the care of his autistic child. He has paid healthcare providers who sent nurses to come and take care of the child. Then uh, as um, what he did, primary school level, he was responsible for taking the child through primary school. The child is now in a special, special secondary school. Secondary schools that are meant for handicaps. So we should be looking towards the benue of tomorrow, benue of the future. We should be looking at institutions that will take care of the needs of our artistic children by ensuring that we establish the schools. Okay, Dr. Sa, apologies, please. We are really running out of time, but just a word in 30 seconds to do away with the stigma attached to autism and what the society can do to help and support people who are autistic to live normal lives like you and I, every other person, in 30 seconds, please. Autistic children are normal kids given to us by God Almighty, and they have the capacity to live a normal life. What these kids need from society is nothing but support. This support should come from various governments, from families, from churches, from mosques, and friends. If that support is given in the right quantum, these kids will grow up to excel in their chosen endeavors. Thank you very much. Dear listener, this is where we must have to conclude on today's edition of Perspectives, which we focused on World Autism Awareness Day. I must appreciate very deeply our lead discussant on the program, the medical doctor, head psychologist and management scholar, Dr. Joe Hassan. Thank you so much, Dr. Hassan, for coming on Perspectives and the wonderful analysis you have given uh, to uh, uh, demystify some of the things known about autism. We appreciate you, Dr. Hassan, for your time. Thank you very much. And I hope when next we require you to come on subsequent editions of this program and other engagements we may need you, yes. uh, you'll be... Uh, yeah, just, pray that, just pray that I'm not in Bayungu <laughs> or uh, out for my medical treatment. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Asamu, All right, thank you. Perspective. Thanks a lot. That, that's our program for today, World Autism Awareness Day, which we focused on. Remember, uh, there is no uh, myth. There is nothing uh, like stigma surrounding it. Please, uh, let's assist people who are autistic to live normal lives like you and I. We must appreciate you for your listenership, your contributions through phone calls and text messages. Unfortunately, we couldn't take all the calls because uh, the time was not enough. We appreciate you kindly uh, bear with us. My name is Nathaniel Nongo. Perspective will come your way again on Friday with another edition. God bless you. Have yourself a great Wednesday. Goodbye and stay safe.